Hi, this is Dave Gimberline, and this week what I want to talk about is how to use the body mechanics of karate to your full advantage. And if you do things exactly right, if you get in a good stance, if you keep your shoulders down, if you use your legs, if the other person tries to apply pressure against you, hard, 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 you can resist it harder, 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 without much effort on your part. What wrecks this on my part is stiffness. If I try to push, I got no leverage, and, and I lose the confrontation. So you have to be that calm, that subtle, that heavy. So there's a few different ways to develop this. One way that I have had success at is talking about leverage. So if I get uh, you fuck, you can stand up and face this way, you know, like second position, you feet apart, and just put your hand up to the side, straight up to the side. In this position, when I push on his hand, he's got no real leverage. He tips over just from the nature of the position. He can include, increase his leverage by stepping out into Kibidach, into a stance. Now he's got some mechanical advantage. That's what stances are for. But there's also an internal leverage. When he puts his hand up like this, all of these muscles on the top are already tense just to keep his arm up and I want the energy to go through the middle of his bone, so I need him to uh, relax the top part and try to squeeze the bottom part. This is true on the inside too. You want to squeeze the inside of your spine, the inside of your legs. So one way to start with this is I pull or push a little bit on here, and he tries to stay there and let it flow to his feet. And then when I put pressure here, look this way, uh, that goes through really, really good. And it's not very hard, right? So now, can you step out into Kibidash towards me? Pretty good. And he still has that leverage down into his leg. Uh, stand up and turn towards me and counter punch. Yep. So to try to get that feeling here, you have the same problem in a couple ways. There's pressure on the top of his legs, pressure on the top of his arms uh, that take away from his ability to let the energy flow down to the floor. So, uh, I'm going to put some pressure on his hand here, and I want you to slightly, slightly pick up your front heel and drop your weight forward. There you go. And make sure it goes along the bottom of your arm. Stay there. Now there's a lot of pressure going through his body. You can drop your front heel and keep the pressure. Excellent. So that's a lot of pressure for just that structure. Another way to do this, uh, do a counter punch, is I'm going to try to pull on here, and I want you to use your legs to squeeze hey. your arm down into your back foot. Keep your spine straight and tall. Now that squeezing pressure is, no, you switch. See? There you go, don't move, don't move, don't move, don't move. That squeezing pressure is the same pressure. Your slightly bent wrist, elbow, soft shoulder, using your leg joints, that makes the pressure. Yep, Thanks. good job. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dave Gimberline, and last week we talked a little bit about how important it was to try to get the energy to flow through the middle of your bones, and a big part of that is activating the bottom part of your arms and legs. This applies also to kicking. Can you one leg in front and stand there? If I put my foot on his body, I want my hip here to be in front of my support leg. If you just take a picture of this, it looks pretty darn good. But if he applies a little bit of pressure, I've got nothing to hold me going backwards. So what I want to do instead is activate the bottom part of my legs this way, so that when he applies pressure, I can dig more and more and more to keep the pressure going. So, bad. Good. Bad. Maybe this leg. Too much tension. Underneath pressure. Drop. So this pressure is important. This doesn't matter as much. Uh, a way to train that, bend your front knee, is we're going to start kicking from here. This knee is going to be really, really bent. Bend more. Yep. And his arms are covering a large part of the possible target. So I'm going to aim for right here above his belt. And some people worry about kicking the knee. You're going to use this knee as a guide to find your way to here. So you pick your foot up and extend it along that guide and make downward pressure. Then recoil and step forward. And step back. Then establish this position. Step forward and down. Of course, keep your arms up. Of course, keep looking straight ahead. 
but over and over again, you're just going to establish this position that you want to see, and there's no real pressure. This is even more true in roundhouse kicks. When people do roundhouse kicks, they tend to pick their leg up and activate the top part of their leg, and it has very little impact when what you need to do to balance it out is activate your inner thighs. So, switch your feet once again, and just uh, leave your tummy here. So, even without the coil from here, this is stiff. I think we should do so one more. This pressure, and it's very stiff. I want to try to make the pressure go to my inner thighs. So I, I want to try to make the pressure go down to the floor, and this will be a heavier strike. You can feel heavier. So, throughout the motion, the energy flows down to the floor as your foot comes around the kick. A way for him to learn this is uh, put your left leg in front, do a roundhouse kick and hold the recoil. Help him by putting your hand here. Keep your head up, make pressure down to the floor, and put your weight up. There you go. So these are heavy, activated. Then go back. Try a roundhouse kick again and recoil there. Heavy. That, there you go. Much better. Feel when it kicked in. Try again. Um, down. Good. Not bad. Thank you. That's all for now.